Productive Pastor 61, Working and Keeping. Hey friends, Chad's here, episode 61. Stoked to jump back on Productive Pastor Wagon with you. Talk about one of my favorite things today, working systems and keeping systems. Love it. It's the just the backbone of the way I like to think of productivity. As we're going to talk about this episode, before we just jump into that, a couple things. Number one, are you coming hanging out with us in the Facebook community? Uh, it's always fun. It's cool. It's a thousand other ministry leaders that are thinking about productivity. What does it mean to live that out together? So I invite you just to come over and make sure you check that out on Facebook. Show notes for this episode can be found at revchadbrooks.com slash ppp slash 061. Going to have some links, going to have some stuff in there. So you might want to come hang out with the show notes and do that. Last thing, wrapping up final bits of details on the Trello course, filming those videos next week, shooting to get this out ASAP. It's been a little busy because I'm actually starting a new role on July 1, and I've already been doing some of that work, uh, but I will be the new Congregational Vitality Strategist for the Louisiana Conference United Methodist Church. Uh, It's going to change up a little bit of stuff. Don't worry, that's happened with the podcast, just kind of working on getting uh, some of that stuff rolling and had to kind of, you know, put some stuff aside. But it's also summer's vacation. Went to Chicago, saw Dead and Company. That was awesome. You know, going to the beach in a couple of weeks. You know, you take priorities and yourself, you have to be the priority. So it's coming. I promise you, I am hustling on getting this out, but it's going to be awesome when it does drop. And so with that, let's get done with all this pre matter. Let's get into the main conversation working and keeping. Now, Productivity nerds are a real thing. I am a productivity nerd. I've always been one. And I'll tell you what, a lot of you that listen to this are productivity nerds as well. Because what I can tell you is every single time I have an episode where I talk about apps or tools or things like that, it gets downloaded like crazy. So I'm expecting the kind of the same thing to happen here with this. Uh, But there's this, there's this thing that's difficult. We like to collect things. We always think The next best app is going to be out there or the tool or the process or the strategy or the theory, all those sorts of things. And y'all, I'm here to tell you it is very easy to get overwhelmed trying to find the perfect system and never actually begin to become productive in your work. So this is flexible. This is different. And this is the kind of thing, the idea of working system and keeping systems. This is a bare bones idea of what you need. I'm going to share with what I do right now and how it's kind of simplified over the last couple of years. But these are just the, the philosophy that I have found to work the best for me and for other pastors of just normal-sized churches. This is kind of like a bare-bones idea. Uh, you can take this at its like littlest depth, and you can complicate it to the level that you feel is appropriate. Um, and so working keeping systems. Before we jump into this, there will be links to these in the show notes. But there are three other episodes that you might find helpful if you're enjoying this conversation, episode 16, where I show my, I share my current productivity toolkit. This is from like a year ago, and I would still say it's like 95% the same. I've actually stopped doing some things, maybe. But check out episode 16. Next is episode 55, Scalable Systems in Trello. That's not too old of an episode, but I talk about how I use Trello to build out some systems, that sort of stuff. And I use Trello as part of what I'm going to talk about with you today. So you know, surprise, surprise, if you've been around the podcast for a while. The last episode to point you to is number 34, about the power of working notes. I live inside of what I call my day book, and I have for since 2006. So what is that, 16 years, 17 years? I work inside of a day book. And that, what that day book is has changed a few times over the years, but I still believe in the power of working notes. And that will come up in this conversation together today. But those three episodes, you can find links to those in the show notes or find them wherever you find podcasts. So repchadbrooks.com slash PPP slash 061 for the show notes. So first thing, your keeping system. Now, I know I say working and keeping. I'm starting with keeping, but you'll understand why. It's just backwards. It's it's, it's backwards, but this is why. You know, you need a keeping system first. And your keeping system is just that. It's a place to store things. It's a place to store your ideas 
It's a place to store, you know, just the variety of things that you might do. It's a place to store the things that you might need. It's a place to store your thoughts. If you're thinking through something or working through something, you need a place to store that. Um, if you're thinking about sermon series for the next year, you need a place to drop and store that in. Here's my only qualification for what a keeping system is. I call it a storage system in the Becoming Productive course, but it's the same thing. Uh, is this, it has to be searchable. You need to be able to trust it, and it has to be searchable. That's just the biggest thing I found for a keeping system. Now, there's all sorts of things that you can do, and I realize now I actually have two layers of a keeping system that work together, but this is it. You know, there's several tools that you can use, resources, apps, or whatever. You could do all of this on paper if you wanted to, but remember that qualification, it has to be searchable and easily searchable. It's really difficult to search tons and tons and tons of notebooks. Trust me, I'm looking at bins of several hundred of them right now that go back for years. It's just difficult to search them. Yes, you can do some things, but it becomes way too cumbersome and laborious. And so I think a digital tool is the best thing for this. So I've used Evernote for years. I looked back. I've been a paid Evernote customer since 2009, so 14 years I've been inside of Evernote. Now, you can also use Notion. There are a lot of people that argue, and if I did not have 14 years of myself inside of Evernote, I probably could transition over to Apple Notes. Apple Notes has become a really, really robust option for a keeping system. Uh, you can also use Rome Research or Obsidian or Tana or all these different things that are coming out. But I'll be honest with you, I quit using Rome earlier this year because I just didn't need it. It was I was being I was productiving for the sake of being productive. Uh, I realized you know it's handy, it's interesting, it's there, but it's actually overcomplicating things too much. Just go into Evernote Chat. And so just do that. So it's my keeping system. It's where I just drop, drop stuff to know I can recall this if I need to. I can link to it from other places, but it's just there. Especially if I think I'm going to need to find it again, it goes in Evernote. If I'm going to have to share it, it goes in Evernote. Um, if, if it's going to be an internal document that will probably never see the light of day to another person, it's going to happen in Evernote you know, blog posts get kind of written out in there, all the sorts of things. I use Notion for a handful of tasks that are super, super development oriented, but it is not really a keeping thing. It's just, it, it's something else to me. I don't know what to call it right now. So that's kind of the first level. The second level for me is I do use Readwise and Readwise gets sucked into Evernote. So every single thing I highlight on Kindle um, that I use inside of Instapaper, all those sorts of things, it sucks those quotes into Evernote for me. And so, you know, that's kind of this basic idea of a keeping system. Um, it's different for me than using, you know, you might say, Chad, well, I'm just going to use, you know, Microsoft Office or GDocs and uh, integrate it with Dropbox, that sort of a thing. Yeah, I get it. You can do that. But remember, the searchability, you need to be able to find stuff in it quickly and you need to be able to trust it. And what I have found is when it's a bunch of documents sitting inside of Dropbox or Google Drive, it's a lot harder to find the things that are in it, that are in Evernote. And there's also all of the random different stuff you can just drop inside of Evernote, like screenshots like this or this. Like one of the things I do whenever I travel, I open up a note and I put down like confirmation numbers, addresses, all the things, take a picture of where my car is in the parking garage, all that kind of stuff, and create this big, huge, massive note file for like what I'm going to have to access as I'm traveling. So, your keeping system is it. That's that's what that is. It's a place for you to leave things and trust that they will be there when you come back. It's like an information cache. So there's a bridge, though, towards a keeping and a working system. And for me, it's, it's good notes. It's where I do worksheets. It's where I do all my sermon work. It's where ideas come. It is the notebook that I carry with me everywhere. It is where I typically take notes on things. And GoodNotes kind of spans these two systems for me in a weird way because I can search it. I don't like to, but I can search it. And it is decently successful at me finding previous things. And so I just keep my notebooks aligned with a year, date, an, uh, a year, month, and I date everything. So GoodNotes serves a little bit of a bridge between working and keeping. Now my working system. This is where I would say I... 
very few, rarely am I proud of my productivity. I am proud of my working system here. Now, in the year module in Becoming Productive, I go deep into an understanding of working systems and keeping systems, how you can use them, different options, that sort of thing. And so if you have Becoming Productive, go to the, the module on the year. Or if you don't have Becoming Productive yet, it's a great $50 course towards developing personal productivity. There's a link in the show notes. You know, go grab Becoming Productive. There's also, and I have a link to this in the show notes, I did a live stream on working and keeping systems over a year ago. I will have that a link to that in the show notes to learn more about that. Because this working system idea is where things get a little bit different. In some ways, what your working system is, is it might just be a project management tool. Uh, but it's also, it needs to be something that's bigger than your calendar. And it's not necessarily a calendar. Now, you can choose to use your, your working system as a calendar. I don't anymore because it's kind of bit me in the butt a few times. Um, but it needs to be bigger than the calendar. It also needs to be highly flexible because ministry requires a lot of flexibility. Remember, this is a responsive vocation, so it needs to be flexible. Um, it needs to be set up in a way so that like, if everything goes haywire, you can let it go haywire, but you can also know this is where you're dropping right back into your primary focuses. Now, because of this, a lot of project management software uh, works really good for a working system. You know, Basecamp, uh, you can do can't set up Kanban boards in Notion, that sort of thing. You can use Asana. For me, I do this in Trello, and I swear that if you're going to follow this dashboard formula like I do, Trello is the absolute best place to be. And that's what I do. I've got a dashboard I set up every week uh, in Trello. I've got a template that I'd, I'm always tweaking and developing and rethinking this template. Um, but every Sunday night when I do my kind of Sunday preview, one of the things I do is I build out my Trello dashboard for the next week. And what I, what I love about Trello is um, I just, I, well, all I do is if, if you're familiar with Trello, I just set up lists as days of the week. But then I have a couple of extra lists that get moved between boards every single week. Uh, and I, I take full advantage of the card features that are part of Trello and the functionality that's there. So checklists, attachments, linking to other files, all those sorts of things. And I take full advantage of that. And so I've got a Monday that's put out in front of me and I can develop templates and, and re recurring Monday tasks that I know I need to think about every single Monday. And I build that out and I can see my focus. And that helps me always answer the question, what is the next and most important thing for me to be doing? And so your working system is designed around keeping you working at your most effective in that moment with the tools that you need in a way that keeps you focused on the most important things at hand. And when you have to step away from the schedule in order to be responsive, it's built out in a way where you can come straight back into it. Now, at the front end of this episode, I mentioned how you know I was hoping to have the Trello course out by now, but life intervened, no big deal. But I've been managing all of my work of creating that Trello course inside of Trello. And I, I'll be honest with you, I had to leave it for like nine or 10 days and not touch it, but it was no big deal because, you know, my checklists and where I was and any sort of notes I needed and my reminders that I had set up, all that kind of stuff was living inside of a Trello card. And when I sat down, I just simply moved it forward the next week, said, hey, when I've got the time to come back to this, I'm going to come back to it. And it's going to be super easy to do. And so really that your working system is about a flexible way to manage the most important thing at hand. So as you're thinking about like developing out what your working system might be, really it's about answering just a couple of questions. Number one, how will you work? Everybody works differently. I can't expect you to work just like me. That's why a lot of times I won't share things or I might share things because it's just an example. It's trial and error. You know, go and figure it out because here's the deal. You spending some time figuring it out on your own it's going to be significantly more powerful than me saying, you need to do exactly this because this is exactly what I do because we're different folks, friends. So how will you work? Can I declare that? The second question is this, what do you need? You know, my life right now, I've got like five different primary ways I work and things I work for. You know, my, my, my ministry now is more complicated than it was when I was a solo pastor at a church plant with 200 folks. So what I need changes. And so your working system allows you to customize it out to be the things that you need. But these two systems 
help keep you help keep the train on the tracks. You know, you're keeping and you're working. This is what I, I swear by. It. This is like bare minimum. Now you might be able to just keep a folded sheet of paper in your pocket and a pocket notebook in your back pocket and your calendar on your phone, and you can handle working and keeping. Congrats if that's working for you. Let's like do a celebration dance together. Or you might need something a little bit more complicated. But my challenge for you at the end of this episode is this. Just think about the ways that you're keeping and the ways that you're working. And is it working for you? If not, think about some of the things we talked about this episode. We'll be back next episode, episode 62. Uh, It's one I'm kind of stoked about. It's about uh, the search for the perfect schedule. You know, the things that we do to think about those schedules, but also... Uh, some some truths your schedule might want to tell you. The less of that episode is going to be called Three Brutal Truths Your Schedule Wants to Tell You. So, stoked about that. Keep your ears uh, ready for that episode, but we will be back in a week. Thanks again, as always. <laughs>